Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Deviant Square, top 10 tips for data analysis, making your research life easier. This week's episode comes to you from the campus of DePaul University in Chicago, Illinois. Episode 7 is unique in two ways. First, it will mark my first on-camera appearance, which will take place shortly. And second, the entire episode was filmed and almost entirely edited on a mobile device, namely my new iPhone 4. So that's also a first for our Deviant Square podcasts. Without further delay, here are your top 10 tips for data analysis, beginning with tip number 10. Run your descriptive statistics first. These types of analyses are typically skipped right over in favor of more interesting and complex analysis. However, running these analyses first can help you to put your more complex and complicated analysis in context, making them more easily understood and interpretable. Base your hypotheses in theory as opposed to a hunch or your data. There are few things more frustrating than trying to explain a statistical anomaly that is not supported by the literature and may just be a result of random error. Check the applicable assumptions of your analysis prior to running that analysis. Now, I know this part is kind of a pain in the rear end, but it can save you a huge amount of time in the long run by checking them first. This is because often failure to check these assumptions can result in some unexpected or strange findings or results, uh, causing you to then have to explain those results or figure out why they came about, even though they may not be valid at all. Prior to running analysis, accept that we may not find significant results and think about what this might mean. Often, our most interesting storylines are a result of analysis that didn't produce significant effects when we thought that they would. Never perform analysis on the master copy of your data. In general, there is nothing to be afraid of when performing an analysis as it's typically pretty hard to mess up your data during the process of any given analysis. With that said, it's still never a good idea to actually run the analysis on your master copy. Always make a second copy. So again, never run on the master copy. And by never, I mean never. Never. Trim your data prior to starting analysis to make it easier to focus in on your analysis. This could be done either manually by just deleting the unneeded variables or by using the define variables or define dataset function in SPSS. You can check out a video tutorial on this function on my stats videos page at statsmakemecry.com. Be sure the analysis you've chosen to conduct is appropriate for your research question. If you aren't 100% sure, look it up, read a blog, ask your professor, or ask your local stats consultant. Whichever you choose, make sure you do it before analysis as it'll save you a lot of headaches later. Write down clear, specific, and concise hypotheses before analysis. It is much easier to test something if you know exactly what it is you're testing. This also prevents so-called data phishing, which brings with it its own set of problems and complications. Remember that there are no bad results. Failing to find statistically significant effects should not be code for run more analysis. Try to let your results tell your data story. You'll be happy you did when you're not having to rationalize your results or make them fit a preconceived notion later on. Use syntax to automate repetitive analysis. This technique can save you tons of time, allowing you to run analysis more efficiently and with a less likelihood of errors that can be associated with running repeated analysis manually. You can see a video tutorial on how to use syntax in SPSS on my stats videos page on www.statsmakemecry.com. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. So long. I'm George W. Bush, and I approve this message. In fact, I think it is awesome.